In this video, you're going to be learning all about CloudWatch logs. You'll learn about some of the core concepts like log streams and log groups, and also how AWS collects your logs on your behalf before sending them into CloudWatch for you to monitor. But before that, this video is sponsored by Logs.io. Logs.io is a powerful monitoring and observability platform that makes it easy to analyze the health of your applications. Whether you're diving deep to resolve a critical issue or monitoring for trends across your infrastructure, Logs.io's intuitive dashboard puts key insights at your fingertips. Logs.io goes beyond basic monitoring, bringing together metrics, distributed tracing, observability, and log management into one seamless experience. Trusted by some of the leading companies worldwide, Logs.io offers a scalable and open source driven solution that can integrate with a variety of cloud providers. Using the newly released AI agent, you can interact with your data by asking questions to identify trends, compare patterns, and receive tips and tricks on how to fix detected issues. The exception feature takes it one step further by automatically analyzing your logs and raising alerts when problematic patterns are detected. It can even provide suggestions on how to address the root cause. Logs.io offers flexible pricing plans that are customizable to fit your needs. And with a free trial, you can explore the platform's full capabilities without any long-term commitments. To get started, you can visit www.logs.io or use the link in the description. So let's first start out by talking about some of the main reasons to use CloudWatch logs. Now there's two main reasons. The first one is in terms of service setup. You see, when you're setting up a service initially, whether it be a DynamoDB instance or an S3 bucket, or you're trying to upload files into there, often many of these different services on AWS will send logs to CloudWatch by default when you're trying to set up these pieces of infrastructure. Now you're not going to be using CloudWatch logs predominantly in this way, but this is something to know about. If you're trying to set up something and it's not working correctly, more often than not, you can head over to CloudWatch and check out the logs that are available to you. So this is one way in which you'll be using CloudWatch logs, which occasionally is pretty helpful. Now the second way that you'll be using them, and this is the predominant way and kind of what most people think of when they think of CloudWatch logs, which is application monitoring. Now, this has to do with getting insight into how your application is performing. This could be related to uh, errors. This could be related to just general uh, debugging, you know, trying to figure out what is my service doing at a certain point in time. This could be like collecting metrics or looking at different data points in your logs to see, you know, how many times did we kind of encounter a certain log line, things like this. So this is the predominant way that you'll be using CloudWatch logs. And I want to kind of double click on monitoring and kind of teach you some of the core concepts that you need to know about here, because this is really how you'll be using CloudWatch logs for the most part. Okay, so in terms of the core concepts, there's two main ones. The first one is called a log stream, okay, log stream. And you can think of a stream like kind of the name essentially describes what it is. When you're emitting logs on any machine, they usually come like different log events, right? So you're appending to a log file on your local disk, whether it be an EC2 machine or something like this, right? Um, and so this is the log stream for one particular instance. Let, let me just grab a different color here. So say this is like EC2 instance one, and then we have a different EC2 instance, and then it's outputting its metrics onto its local machine into its log file, and it's just appending it appending it, appending it, so on and so forth, right? So this is a separate log stream. Now the nuance with log stream is that they come from the same source. So all of the logs in this top bar here, they're coming from the same EC2 machine, okay? Uh, whereas all the log lines that are coming from this one down here, they're all coming from a second instance or a second EC2 machine. Now this can also apply to other pieces of infrastructure such as ECS or Elastic Container Service or Lambda functions. They all kind of have the same uh, behavior in terms of log streams. So if you had multiple different ECS tasks, then you'd have multiple different log streams, right? And so that's essentially what the log stream is. It's just a collection of log events that you can take a look at in the CloudWatch log section of the console. Uh, so these all have names. So there's like a stream one, for example, and usually they're like these random looking hash keys that are uh, very difficult to read, but it doesn't really matter. All you really need to know is like what the ID is, and you'll just know that the collection of events that are in stream one all relate to, you know, this instance over here. So EC2 instance at the top section, right? And the reason that streams are important is because, well, it's kind of makes sense if you think about it, right? Typically in a application architecture, you have, you know, a bunch of different instances. These can be like all EC2 instances, for example. So that's one, two, and three. Then typically you have a load 
load balancer up here and traffic is coming here and then it's kind of directing it to the corresponding instance. And each of these one different instances are all emitting their different log lines. This one's emitting its log line. This one is emitting its log lines, et cetera, et cetera. And what if you're trying to debug a particular request, right? Like maybe a request came like this and it went to this EC2 instance and then there were some like log lines right here that are related to that invocation. Now, because all of the events are contained within the same stream for this particular instance, it's very easy to go and look this up and to figure out what were all the details for this particular event or this particular request that came into my instance, okay? So this is uh, one of the most important concepts in CloudWatch Logs, which is log streams. Now, the second concept kind of piggybacks on top of log streams, but it's essentially a collection of log streams, right? So you can define collections of these streams and it's pretty straightforward. It's the name is kind of intuitive. It's called a log group log group. This allows you to group these things together. There's no particular way or rule in which you should group things together. They can be based on, you know, a particular application. It could be a particular environment or it can be based on something else entirely. That's completely up to you. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that there are some settings that you can apply onto the log group, and the settings will be applied to all streams that are within that group. So it could be things such as the retention policy of the different log files within the group. It can also be things like access control. If you want to restrict access to particular sets of users, that's all controlled at the group level. Okay, so these are the two main concepts that you need to know about. The first one again was log stream, and the second one again is log groups. Now what I wanna do is briefly talk about how the log files actually get into CloudWatch, right? Because we know that you know this works for EC2, it's, it's native to AWS and EC2s, I'm sure many of you already know this, but just as a quick reminder, they're virtual servers that you can rent from AWS, but this can also work if you have on-premise machines, right? You can get on-premise machines that uh, will upload their logs into CloudWatch if you so desire. So how does that work? So let me explain this to you um, on a separate section here. So we're just scrolling down a bit. Let me just grab my pen back. So let's imagine that we have like, let's keep it simple right now. Let's say we have a single EC2 machine, right? Or an on-premise machine. It doesn't really matter. Right now, we're just talking about EC2. Now, how does logging usually work if we just take all the AWS fluff out of this, right? Usually what happens is that as your application is running, like on the disk of this machine, right? On the disk that's at attached to it, you will create a file and you will write log entries to that file, right? So you'll be logging stuff. Okay, it's going, it's going, it's going. And then every once in a while, uh, a process will kick in, which will rotate the log file, right? So it'll uh, take the log entries and it'll put it somewhere to some destination. Let's call this question mark. And then it'll clear everything out and basically create a new entry, right? Let me just try to erase this if I can. There we go. And then you, you basically start again, right? So you start writing to the logs on this machine. And then eventually, uh, once this fills up or some kind of time period elapses, usually it's either size or time period, it re-triggers the delivery to the destination and the process keeps on repeating itself. And what I've seen, it's usually like an hour or so hourly log rotations are pretty common. Okay, so this is how it works normally, right? But as you can see here, all of this stuff is happening on the disk of the EC2 machine. Like there's nothing about CloudWatch here. And again, this applies if it's an on-premise machine as well. And so how you actually get this information into CloudWatch is, well, there's two ways. The first way is you do it manually, right? You have some kind of process that reads these files and then periodically it'll call the corresponding put APIs in the CloudWatch log systems. And then it'll just kind of write all that stuff in there and clean everything out. And then all of that details now get persisted into CloudWatch, right? But this is a little bit annoying. Well, not a little bit, it's really annoying. No one ever wants to do this. It's very frustrating. It's a lot of work to put into something that's largely been a solved problem, right? And so how do uh, how does this actually work in the happy case? Like what is the suggested way to do this? And the suggested way, and let's just kind of redraw this, 
And so we got our EC2 machine here. You're going to be kind of, uh, you still have your log files. They're still writing to your local disk. So how you would do this is that on this EC2 machine, you would install what is called the CloudWatch agent. And I'm running out of space here, but let's just say this is the CloudWatch agent. And essentially what this kind of process does is it handles all the logic to take your logs periodically off of disk and then send them over into the CloudWatch system so that it can persist them into the corresponding log stream. Streams, right. So periodically it'll do this and then it'll kind of delete the files and manage everything for you. So all you have to do from a user perspective is just install this CloudWatch agent and start emitting log lines as you normally would. And this is for EC2, but they also have similar kind of features for other AWS services such as ECS. You can also install this on prem. So if you have your own uh, machines that are not EC2. Um, for Lambda, you actually don't have to worry about this at all because automatically it delivers to CloudWatch. It actually uses this CloudWatch agent behind the scenes for you. But this is generally the suggested approach to persist your log files into CloudWatch by using the CloudWatch agent. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, the last important thing to talk about in terms of CloudWatch logs is how to actually search through your logs. Because unfortunately, uh, this wasn't always the easiest thing to do, oddly enough, right? Like say you have many different log streams that are all writing log files, right? So this is like one log stream for one instance. This is another log stream for another instance. And this is another one, you know, and you can have many, many ones in many different large companies. You could have potentially hundreds of EC2 instances that are hosting a piece of infrastructure. So how do you actually look at all the different log streams in one shot, right? Like how do you search through this in some kind of easy to do way? So previously, what you had to do in the AWS console was that like you had to use this crummy search feature, which only worked like half the time. And often it would just time out and never really work in the first place. So you had to go through each log stream one by one, as opposed to looking at like the entire group, uh, which is a more intuitive thing to do. But anyways, it was very, very frustrating. It didn't work half the time. And basically you would just spend your, your time there twiddling your thumbs, trying to figure out like, is this thing going to actually return my results or not? So the good news is that the CloudWatch team released a new feature called CloudWatch Insights. And this is a fantastic improvement and actually solves this problem entirely so you don't ever have to worry about it again. And the way the CloudWatch Log Insights feature works is that it allows you to search through log streams all at once. So you can look through this one, this one, and this one all at once. You can also look at ones that are part of different applications. So if you have log streams over here and you have a group that kind of binds them together, then you can also look at these all at once. So you can write effectively a query that can access many different sources of logs all across your AWS account if you so desire and you can do it in one shot, okay? And you can also look at it by time range to say, I wanna look at the past seven days, seven hours, seven minutes, whatever it may be. Now, the thing to know about with the insights feature is that it's, you pay by the amount of data that you uh, browse. So if you're looking across a large span of data, then you're gonna pay more, uh, which, which kind of makes sense for the feature. And then the other thing to know about is that it uses this kind of SQL-like proprietary language, but it's pretty intuitive to use and it does make sense, but they do have a new AI-based feature where you can just tell it what you want using natural language and it'll convert it into a query without ever having to learn the proper syntax, okay? So these are the main concepts of CloudWatch Logs. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.